Hey everyone, it's Pearl S and Toys back in today's video with another Marvel Legends action figure review. Today we're looking at the Infinity Saga Iron Man Mark II. This uh, has actually been on like the top of my wish list for a very, very long time. I am in love with the Mark II design. They all silver, it just looks so, so good. And a lot of that, uh, my love for this suit armor is down to uh, nostalgic reasons. Yeah, there's going to be some Pro Lesson Toys lore in this video. Brace yourselves. Yeah, the other Infinity Saga uh, Mark III Iron Man was... I want to say he was in my top 10 favorite figures of 2021 or 2020. I forget which year it came out. But one of those years, it was one of my favorites. After escaping capture overseas, intrepid inventor Tony Stark built the Mark II armor, a sleek, nearly invincible suit equipped with powerful repulsor blast and a boot boosters for flight. I didn't quite stick it, but I almost got there. And here is the Mark II out of the packaging. Now, what I was going on about earlier, how I was saying, you know, this fit. Dude, what is up with all these Infinity Saga figures not being able to freaking stand up? Jeez. Sorry, I got a little carried away. I got to save it to the end of the video. My bad. Back in the day, um, when the first and second Iron Man movies were coming out, the Hasbro was sort of phasing out Marvel Legends, you know, uh, because the series was on a decline. People weren't interested in buying them anymore because they were honestly garbage back then. But instead, they would release like movie figures under the title you know they would have like an iron man series captain america the first avenger thor and i think they stopped doing it right um at for the avengers movie no but one of those figures was this guy the mark ii iron man this one is not marvel legends it's from the iron man i want i actually think this is from the first movie wave or line um but the reason why this figure means so much to me is because I had gotten it out. Um, I had bought it when I had gone out to uh, a swap meet. I think Santa Clara swap meet. Uh, it was it was up north. Um, and I went there with my stepdad. And, you know, he's a, he was a very busy man. So, like, any time I got to spend with him going out for a day, I always cherish those days, those memories. Oh man, I'm starting to well up. <laughs> no, but this figure just has always meant a lot to me because it's a reminder of that day we got to spend together uh, being a father and son. And I'll always cherish it for that reason. Despite the sentimental value the older one holds, you can already see just a big improvement upon that one that the new one has you know uh I, I, first thing like the height <laughs> the size uh between these two is a very is very contrasting you know this one is very much in that smaller six inch scale while this one is in more in a proper six inch scale oops i forgot to turn on my lights there we go um and yeah you can see just like the level of paint apps like used on this figure, it's like so much more detail. It looks more battle ridden. Um, this one, however, is like brand spanking new, very shiny. Um, no, no battle damage on it or anything. I want to take a look, closer look at the older one because it also has like more paint apps like all throughout the figure. Like you can see these yellow lines. Uh, let's just like turn it a bit. Yeah, you can see like they're on the outside of the little pins right there then they keep going up and they kind of end at the hip right here but you can see like all these yellow lines there's like triangles right there it is very much like it makes it feel like a prototype in a way you know this is a suit that he no yeah this is definitely like the test suit you know he was it feels like it's like being worked on it's not at its full potential yet but it's still being worked on and you can see like that those paint apps i was talking about on the shoulder especially like you see a bunch of black paint right there it's like sort of dry brushed on all throughout even in the joints right here these double jointed elbows and not there's not really anything on the back but it's still just wow and they use different silver paints for like the inside of these pieces right here like it looks 
fantastic even all these years later and the repulsors are painted in that's awesome and yeah continuing down you can see like there's different silvers used like some of them are darker they have that black wash while these ones are shiny brand new and going down you get some more ports right there and all detailed at the bottom of the feet do i you know i might be wrong this figure is freaking awesome if it wasn't for the fact that it was like so small like i would definitely just like keep this one let's however take a look at the newer one and yeah you can see oh, a lot of that painting detail that was so prevalent on this first one does not show up here and it you know what it may be more screen accurate this way because i don't remember like it having like this varying amount of uh grays and silvers on the suit but yeah the, all that detail is pretty much lost all in favor of just having a one color you know one silver all throughout the figure the paint apps it does have are these nuts and bolts going all the way around or just bolts actually <laughs> just going all throughout the figure on these uh panel parts doesn't continue on the abdomen eh, yeah yeah i mm. Again, I don't know if it's screen accurate. I kind of would have wished like there would be more bolts going down this way, but I don't know. I don't know if it was like that in the movie or not. I seriously got to rewatch it. But yeah, this figure also suffers from the same problem as that Mark II that came out. Sorry, Mark III that came out all those years ago. And that those that's the arms. The arms, he has little T-Rex arms. And yeah, you can see right here, it's... It's. I feel like it's a lot more noticeable on this figure right here. I just spit. I don't know if you could see that on camera. That was so disgusting. I'm sorry. But yeah, the arms are very, very small. And you compare it to the older one. And you can see like the arms just go down a little bit longer. Uh, but it, I feel like it looks more natural, you know, this way. If it wasn't for his like straw legs, like it would, it would look great. But those legs kind of hold it back a bit. Yeah, he had, this figure has some tree trunks for legs, but his he has tiny, 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 tiny arms. Well, not tiny, short. They're very short. Um, but going up, and the only really other paint detail that you get from this figure, oh no, repulsor. Oh, uh, are the repulsor right here? The arc reactor, sorry, and then his eyes, and that's about it. And yeah, that's it. That's really the only thing you get. And for accessories, he comes with this headpiece with uh, the face mask going up. Uh, I don't know. I've never really been a, that big of a fan of this head sculpt just because I feel like the head, it's like the face itself is a little too small. It's like scrunched in. It definitely looks like him. I just wish the head was a tiny bit bigger, but I understand why they couldn't do it because like the head already is so small. <gasps> no, what? This actually took me by surprise. It made me gasp. I'm like, what? Um, he comes with two repulsor blast hands with the little flat piece sculpted to going up. So he's able to uh, bend his arm, his hand up pretty far. But it doesn't have any peg holes, which is like, I can't remember the last <laughs> Iron Man figure that did this, that didn't have peg holes in the hands that you're able to plug these effects into. Man, that's so weird. And... On top of that, like they didn't paint the blue in. It's like, what was the point of doing this if you weren't going to paint that in? Oh, it's, it's mind boggling. Wow. But yeah, he does come with these two repulsor effects, but I guess you'd have to plug them into the bottom right here, which isn't really that accurate to the movie because I've always remembered him like not shooting blue. It's like fire coming out of the bottom of his boots, right? Yeah, I have no idea what Hasbro were thinking with this. That that was a really bad uh, decision. But yeah, before I go into articulation, there is none for these hands. They just rotate. But yeah, continuing on, the head is able to move up this much, go down that much. He has some great pivot right there and some side-to-side -side movement. His arm is able to move this far up, and with the butterfly shoulder joint, is able to move a little bit back and not a whole lot forward. He has a shoulder rotation, an upper arm swivel, a double jointed elbow, and he has a wrist hinge allowing him to move a tiny bit in and out and all the way around. He's able to bend this far back, this far forward. 
he has some pivot right there in the abdomen and some oh, a little bit of side to side movement. <laughs> oh, I have something in my nose. I'm <laughs> I'm getting an allergic reaction to those uh, those alternate hands. Jeez, his leg is able to kick out this much, go out to the side this much, and go back a fairly decent amount. He has drop down hips allowing his legs to go out even further. And he has upper thigh rotation, a double jointed knee. And his foot is able to bend this far down, this far up. And he has... <laughs> On to my favorite part of the video, the size comparisons. Here is the new Mark II Iron Man compared to the old Mark II Iron Man. I'm definitely keeping this as, because of the aforementioned uh, sentimental value attached to it. But... You know, I don't mind replacing him with this one on the display. Here he is compared to the Mark III Iron Man, which shares the same body mold. Oh, man, this thing, it looks so great on camera right now. Wow. Here he is next to Iron Monger. Let's just zoom out a bit. There we go. Happy Hogan and Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> I just said Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, Pepper Potts. The Mark IV and Mark I Iron Man. Then we have Endgame and Civil War Iron Man. Mark uh, 6, I think, and War Machine. Then we have him next to the Iron Man 3 Iron Man, which, psst, hey, Hasbro, we need a new version of this. Please, uh, mine's a little run down. <laughs> and the Marvel Legends Spider-Ham. I shouldn't be scared of you, but your repulsors don't even work. <laughs> ah, you fool. Hey, leave our brother alone. Hmm? Oh, shit. Okay, final rating. I'm going to give this guy a, a 7. A 7.5 out of 10. I'm going to give this figure a 7.5 out of 10. I think he is a whole lot better than that Black Widow figure that I reviewed recently. But, you know, he still has a bit of... He has some faults. You know, he could have definitely improved on some aspects like the paint apps and the overall proportions of the action figure itself. I think the articulation is pretty fine. I really hate that repulsor hand. Jeez, what were they thinking? But yeah, overall, I think it is a pretty standard figure. It's not anything to write home about, which is why I'm giving a 7.5. But it is not bad. But yeah, that'll do it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. Anything you can do that will support your channel will be greatly, greatly appreciated. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Mmm. Bye.